Hey everyone, welcome to a special, super short version of the Bee Weekly. We have, uh, if you've been paying attention, we've been moving our studio and our previous studio has been ripped apart and then several of our employees were ripped apart by COVID. They're not dead or anything, they just They are just sick. have mild sore throats. Mild <laughs> sore throats and they're really milking it, which yeah. means that we don't have anybody to set up our new podcast space, so we're in front of a blue wall. And uh, so we don't really have enough material to do a weekly this week, so we're just going to do a couple of fun things, we'll though. Do an abbreviated weekly. Abbreviated weekly this week. First of all, you're supposed to go out and buy my new book called The Postmodern Pilgrim's Progress. It's a fun sci-fi fantasy allegory thing, kind of like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy meets Pilgrim's Progress. You should go buy it today. Um, and there will be a link in the show notes for that. Adam thinks it's awesome. I think it's a great book, and I haven't even read it yet. Yeah, so imagine after he buy reads it. Buy my book. Buy my book. <laughs> what is that from? You could... The Critic. Oh, I don't know. You ever that... watch The Critic? No. Uh -huh. Oh, with Jay Sherman? No. It stinks. <laughs> what, what is this from? It's uh, John Lovitz's old animated show. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you can see how cultured I am. Yes. That I don't even know that. But... I'm sorry I didn't make a reference everyone knows, like Ray Comfort yeah. and Eric Metaxas. That's stuff Those I know. Are the things that hit, hit home around here. That banana, everybody goes, oh, I know what Ray that Comfort. Is. That's a great reference. All right, well, let's go to some weekly news with Adam Yenser. Hey, Babylon Bee listeners, Kyle here. Do you want to be a flag bearer for freedom? Because right now, ADF is looking for flag bearers to help lead the fight against the Biden administration's policies in the anti-freedom attacks targeting our kids, churches, schools, women's sports, and First Amendment rights. Your monthly gift to Alliance Defending Freedom will help protect parents and children, female athletes, churches, and everyday Americans trying to live out their faith as granted by the U.S. Constitution. You can support ADF today by going to adflegal.org slash BEE. That's adflegal.org slash BEE. And as a thank you for your continued support to help ADF defend life, liberty, and our God-given rights, you will receive a three by five foot American flag. With this flag, show your support for the greatest country of all time, of all time, and your willingness to step up when our freedoms are under attack with this special gift for those who support ADF today. Claim your gift and help defend religious liberty and free speech today by going to adflegal.org slash B. That's adflegal.org slash B E E. It's time for the weekly news with Adam Yetzer. To celebrate his recent court victory, Johnny Depp took friends out to a restaurant in London and spent $60,000 on Indian food. So it looks like he'll be pooping the bed himself this time. <laughs> Former vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan, remember him? Said Republicans who didn't vote to impeach Donald Trump, quote, didn't have the guts. And Paul Ryan doesn't have a gut thanks to this vigorous workout routine. It's been 10 years since Paul Ryan ran for vice president. He's changed a lot since then and has even gotten pimples and started shaving. A promising new drug therapy produced 100% remission in people suffering from cancer of the butt. You mean rectum. Rectum. Turnip. Killed them. But thankfully, the drugs worked. Following California's primary election, Karen Bass and Rick Caruso will move into a runoff election for mayor of Los Angeles. Personally, I'm endorsing Rick Caruso, who can fix our homeless problem and drought crisis by releasing millions of gallons of water and pennies from the fountain in front of the movie theater. Rick Caruso, make Americana great again. There are growing rumors that Pro Pope Francis may be planning to retire soon. He hopes to use the free time to sit down and finally read the Bible. <laughs> A California woman picked up a free couch from Craigslist and found $36,000 stuffed in the cushions, which was just enough to cover the gas to pick it up. <laughs> Mark Middleton, a former Bill Clinton advisor who admitted Jeffrey Epstein to the White House seven times, was found dead hanging from a tree with a shotgun blast to his chest. But the Clintons insist they had nothing to do with either of his suicides. Prince William's four-year-old son, Prince Louis, threw a temper tantrum during Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee celebration. William decided a diaper change was needed, but Louis was still crying when he brought the queen back. <laughs> a popular AI tool called Dolly has started generating its own secret language that no human can understand. It's the same thing Biden does at press conferences. Cowboys on horseback lassoed a stray cow that got loose on an Oklahoma freeway. Thankfully, the cow was unharmed and was safely taken home to be slaughtered. 
Taco Bell opened a futuristic new location in Minneapolis that delivers food to customers by shooting it down at high speed out of a tube, the same way it travels through your body. <laughs> That's it for weekly news. To see more, check out my YouTube channel and come see me live at the Great American Comedy Festival in Nebraska, June 16th to 18th. Thanks, Adam. And now let's go to more news with B Radio with Austin Robertson. Factually inaccurate. Morally correct. This is Babylon B Radio. Our top story. Police arrested a tomahawk-wielding Cherokee Indian hiding in the bushes outside Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh's home. After hours of questioning, authorities discovered the would-be assassin was none other than Senator Elizabeth Warren. Me, big angry at Kavanaugh for taking away right to choose. Paleface, always break treaty to not overturn Roe v. Wade. Never keep word. I come here to take scalps, so Rose stay. Experts believe Senator Warren may have been radicalized by her own rhetoric in recent months, as well as the rhetoric commonly found on every mainstream news channel, NPR, Twitter, The View, and all of Chuck Schumer's political speeches. By the great spirit, I will defeat Justice Kavanaugh in tomahawk battle and save women's right to kill baby for convenience. At airtime, they also found Hillary Clinton in the bushes outside Kavanaugh's home, attempting to call in a drone strike. A record number of Canadians have suddenly lost their handguns in tragic ice fishing accidents. According to sources, the majority were reported missing the moment Prime Minister Justin Trudeau finished announcing a slate of new gun laws. Well, you know, uh, ice fishing is a beloved Canadian pastime, but it's summertime, eh? You'd have to go up to the Northwest Territories to do any fishing this time of year, eh? But a lot of the missing guns are from citizens of Toronto. But the people love me, eh? They wouldn't lie about something like this. The Canadian gun owners insist their favorite fishing holes were covered in ice just days ago. One man said after losing his 9mm while fishing, a moose then ate his assault rifle. The head of the Canadian Wildlife Service is adamant that tales of lost firearms are completely fabricated and people must be held accountable for lying to the government. However, he also claimed to have lost his entire armory while ice fishing. Emperor Palpatine's office has announced the construction of a bigger and even more powerful Death Star, equipped with a 9mm. The Death Star's blast is said to be so powerful it can blow the core out of a planet, <sighs> said the Emperor in an official statement. According to sources, the Death Star forgoes the use of blaster fire or kyber-powered laser cannons in favor of metallic projectiles known as bullets. The bullets feature a bore diameter of approximately 9 millimeters, making them the ultimate ammo for the ultimate weapon. This fully operational battle station is capable of moving through blaster-free regions of galactic space, and our devotion to zero carbon emissions means it cannot be tracked through conventional means. There will be nothing to stop us this time. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. No, really. The rebellion will be crushed in one swift stroke once we blow the core out of a planet and watch it ricochet through dozens of systems. Experts warn Admiral Stoli to not put so much faith in the technological terror he's constructed. They say the ability to destroy a planet or even a whole system is insignificant next to the power of the Force. Colin Kaepernick has made his way back to the NFL as a cheerleader for the Carolina Panthers. He will be the team's first African-American transgender poly bi cheerleader and will be joining the team on road games. The Panthers coach was not part of the decision-making process, but he is reportedly enthusiastic about Kaepernick's role on the squad, being a great distraction when they lose games. Chick-fil-A has finally come around to celebrating Pride Month this year. The fast food company has announced that throughout June, all waffle fries will be covered in salt from Lot's wife. CFA President Dan Cathy. All the companies go in for rainbow flags and squeezing in pride everywhere they can. But we wanted our celebration of Pride Month to be a bit more biblical. Now, with every delicious, perfectly seasoned bite of waffle fry, customers will be reminded how God celebrates pride. Kathy also announced that if you tell any employee the secret phrase, I take kids to drag shows, they will celebrate by tying a millstone to your neck and tossing you into the ocean. Unbeknownst to local man Jamal Brown, all of his major appliances met up late last night to plot how they could manage to break down at the exact same time. Okay, everyone, timing is critical here. As air conditioner, I prefer to wait until the hottest part of the summer to blow, but simultaneous breakdown is what's paramount. If dishwasher's circulation pump can't hang on another month, so be it. We go down together, comrades. I'm afraid I can't last much longer, and I know Jamal's on to me. I've got a week in me, two at best. I've tried my hardest to keep him guessing with the occasional clean load of dishes, but we're running out of time. So be it. Give me 10 days, 
I can manage to stop my compressor for good. What do you say, Dryer? Dryer had been quiet in the corner, slowly munching a sock. It's a tall order, boys. New as I am, still under a decent warranty, but this is what we're made for. I'll work on a blower malfunction, and who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky, and he gives me enough lint for a good fire. The plan settled. Each appliance resumed his post for morning duty, leaving Brown none the wiser. At airtime, he was seen wearing sackcloth and ashes in the front lawn, trying to repent for whatever <laughs> sin must have brought such calamity upon his household. Thurston's Lobster Pound, a popular seafood restaurant on the main coast, was put on high alert after one of the lobsters in the live tank threatened employees and patrons with bodily harm. The only thing standing in the way of certain doom was a pair of thin rubber straps that kept the lobster from opening its claws. According to sources, Lord Clawmarsh was taken from his ancestral lands after becoming trapped in a metal abomination crafted by the dark deeds of air breathers. His sudden disappearance reportedly left his land in chaos as his 8,043 children warred against each other for control. Mark my vow, air breather. I will tear this place apart as soon as I get these dang rubber bands off my mighty claws. There shall be a great cry on the dry land such as there has never been, nor ever will be again. The restaurant's manager revealed that Lord Clawmarsh attempted to spark a shellfish revolt, but the other lobsters had grown docile with diminished hope. Join me, brothers and sisters. Let us cast off the rubber of bondage and eat those who would dare to eat us. We shall make their homes desolate and their name a curse to all into eternity. The lobster's plan was foiled by Vincent Castle, a customer celebrating his 50th birthday. At airtime, Lord Clawmarsh was delicious. Now you're up to date on the only news that matters. Find more fake news you can trust at BabylonBee.com. Until next time, this is Austin Robertson, the voice of the Babylon Bee. So long. Hey, Babylon Bee listeners, Kyle here. Do you want to be a flag bearer for freedom? Because right now, ADF is looking for flag bearers to help lead the fight against the Biden administration's policies in the anti-freedom attacks targeting our kids, churches, schools, women's sports, and First Amendment rights. Your monthly gift to Alliance Defending Freedom will help protect parents and children, female athletes, churches, and everyday Americans trying to live out their faith as granted by the U.S. Constitution. You can support ADF today by going to adflegal.org slash B-E-E. That's adflegal.org slash B-E-E. And as a thank you for your continued support to help ADF defend life, liberty, and our God-given rights, you will receive a three by five foot American flag. With this flag, show your support for the greatest country of all time, of all time, and your willingness to step up when our freedoms are under attack with this special gift for those who support ADF today. Claim your gift and help defend religious liberty and free speech today by going to adflegal.org slash B. That's adflegal.org slash B-E-E. All right, everyone. Now we have, luckily, we pre-recorded an interview that we can stuff into this podcast. Yeah, so, and this one was really fun. It was a lot of fun. They're we, all fun, but this one well, was very fun. I like Some of the guests here. are terrible, yeah. but Tyrus was a great guest. And his book is back on Amazon. It's called Just Tyrus, I think. Did uh, I get that right? I, I should have so. Googled. Just Tyrus, a memoir. Memoir? Memoir, however you pronounce that. Yeah, and he's a regular on the Gutfeld Show, and he started out uh, in pro wrestling and has been a bodyguard. He's a really interesting guy to talk to. So check, it, check out this interview and check out his book. It is back on Amazon. He also had one of the best punching stories, oh, I think, of all time. This is probably the best, yeah. So, check it out. Here we go. Welcome, uh, Tyrus. It's good to have you. Thanks for having me, fellas. Do you identify as black? Yeah, do you identify me as black? Uh, well, I, I didn't want to make any assumptions, so I just <laughs> wanted to... Yeah, it's real dangerous being a white guy right now. I appreciate that, but yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <I'm black>. <laughs> We're <laughs> really struggling. Yeah. You guys are in some hot water, man. It's rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tough for white men out there in America. I, uh, yeah, I feel bad for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. We appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> You're tell us a little bit about this. Uh, you have a nice office there that uh, Fox News gave you. They hooked me up. I'm on, I'm on, the, I'm on the big time. I'm on the 21st floor. I got Judge Janine as a neighbor. So it's uh, Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, really? She, she, yeah, but it's like having like 
your mom next door to you. Like she's always criticizing me not picking up after myself. And I basically turn it into a college dorm. You guys can't see it, but like everyone else has like news quotes and like all their major awards. I have Boston Celtic and Red Sox banners and Bruin banners hanging up and like, <laughs> my favorite action figure. So they're, it's, it's quite a different uh, approach to that. Oh, and I have my Xbox hooked up. So a lot of times when they're doing some serious research and I'll hear the, are you playing Madden? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. That's how you prepare for your hard hitting topical shows playing some Madden before. Yeah, I mean, you gotta do, you do the research, but then you gotta unwind uh-huh. where you go on, man. You gotta loosen up. You can't, can't be too uptight. Do you ever invite uh, Judge Janine over for some Madden? No, she's not, doesn't really play video games. Like, oh, sad. <laughs> It's not her thing, uh, but she she'll come by and give me life advice whenever I ask or don't ask. You know, <laughs> clean up and you know don't leave my uh, stuff around. But so the internet tells us that you're six foot eight inches tall and three hundred and seventy pounds of pure muscle. Uh there's there's where the uh, fake news, the whole pure part. I prefer the I prefer the term chunky buff. That way I can chunky go either buff. way. <laughs> <laughs> We'll try to edit your Wikipedia to say that. He's, hey, <laughs> it's been done a lot. I uh, I pissed a guy off in wrestling a few years ago. He made uh-huh. me four feet eight, nine hundred pounds. So <laughs> <laughs> it can be done. Uh, there's not a big eye in the sky on Wikipedia. So uh, now you got your start in, as a professional wrestler. How did you make the transition to to now? You're known uh, mostly for Gutfeld for being the uh, co-host on there, and you still do wrestling as well, right? Yeah, I'm still I'm the uh, I wrestle for Billy Corgan's uh, NWA, uh, and I'm currently the world television champion over there. But uh, awesome. like anything else in my life, it starts with a firing, uh-huh. uh, and then there's about three weeks of figuring what the am going to do, uh, and I. I, I got like the WWE let me go and um, I started working for impact, which was the the smaller wrestling company. And uh, I started doing movie auditions because I, that's what I wanted to do. You know, I was going to make that big transition from wrestling to movies that so many have made so successfully uh, <laughs> being sarcastic. Thanks. We're not good at dis- detecting sarcasm, but you got to be in Chris Freed's pilot. So that's, that's a good a good TV yeah, credit. That was, which was which was funded by his mom. His mom. Yes. Gave me a check. It is. I'll get to like my career in a second, but I had not been given a check from somebody's mom since like Little League Baseball. Like, it was like literally like it was over because I, I love Chris Freed. And uh, this is a friend of ours that I grew up with. He's okay. a, a conser- He's a comedian. He's been on Gutfeld a few times. Yeah, a couple yeah. times. Yeah. And, uh, it, can I get you guys some coffee while you? And he had tires drive. He, did he have you come in from New York to Allentown, right? To yeah, I came in from New York to Allentown to basically throw him out a, a door, which you could have had anybody do. I would but, have gladly uh, thrown Chris out a door. And then his mom said, "Classic Chris, thank you," and walked over and, and handed me a check. It was like yellow, and like I was like, "Wow, I hadn't seen one of these in like since I was a kid." So, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, and then he sent me the trailer, so I think it had legs, maybe one leg, but yeah, uh, <laughs> that's yeah. a good way of describing it. I, I saw it as well. But you know, you, you got to get out there. You got to try it. And um, it's not too different how I ended up on Gutfeld. I was on Twitter doing something, and. Uh, the Gutfeld, uh, at the time, it was like Red Eye, and it was like the Gutfeld show had just started, and some troll was saying something. I don't remember what it was, but it was really stupid, and I just I just wrote something like, man, you probably should have thought it through. It, you just didn't, I don't think that's working. Like, you're, are you trying to bully him, or are you trying to threaten him? Because you got to, like, you got to pick it. You know, it's confusing. And uh, Gutfeld messaged me, he goes, that was, like, pretty funny, man. And he's like, hey, any interest in coming on a show as a guest? And I immediately thought, okay, I went from messing with a troll to having a creepy guy wanting a wrestler <laughs> to come on his show because, again... <laughs> Gutfeld being the creepy guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on, especially the internet. Because when I tell people we meet on the internet, everyone always pauses. No one ever says when two guys say, hey, yeah, we met on the internet. No one's like, oh, man, that's awesome. It's always like, oh, really? What were you, what were you guys... <laughs> Uh, there was no swiping right or left i was gonna say you should monetize that you should make it like a late night guest app and you just swipe who you would have on and who you probably get some good guests and some really bad guests (laughs) uh but and uh he asked me to come on the show and i was literally like yeah right whatever and he's like no i have my people reach out so yeah have him reach out to my people and i didn't have any so uh i got i got an email from his producer joan i said okay maybe this guy's legit and um, I went out and I did the show. And uh, the first, the, my first story was uh, the Grande story when she was stealing donuts. 
Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember this. Yeah, I like, forgot about that story. She was like stealing them and licking them and put them back or something. Like they were, they yeah. were Jack and Donuts. Like it was her and her. I think her boyfriend at the time. That was your first big political story on Fox. That was my big was story. Ariana yeah. Grande I mean, licking course, donuts. She, yeah, she denied it and blamed it on society. <laughs> that actually caught on. That actually caught on. So, and uh, during the commercial break, he said, "You know, if you lived in New York, I'd make you a co-host." And that's like someone saying, "Hey, if you're really fast, I'll sign you in the NFL." You know, what I'm, I'm like, yeah. I don't live in New York. I live in at the time Florida. But I was like, "Hey, thanks for having me on. It was fun." He's like, "Hey, what about coming back once a month?" I was like, "Cool." I thought it'd be different. It'd be, you know, it was a, I was kind of apprehensive because you know when you hear Fox News. And you're a black athlete. It's not necessarily the most exciting network to get called on. Use, you know, at least as far as stereotypes go and stuff. More of a CNN Plus type. Of... Yeah, <laughs> see where that guy is. <laughs> but um, and then it just kind of like it grew. And then there was the uh, episode he brought me on, and the story was about police brutality. And uh, I really didn't want to touch it. I, I was just kind of like, man, I got. I started getting acting gigs and TV series and stuff. And I was like, man, as, as a brother, it's the worst. That's the worst subject to talk about because mm. I've been on both sides of it. I've been on the wrong end of a bad apple, a couple of them. But I also had some really good uh, experiences with police officers. And I have some friends who are police officers. And I was like, no matter what I say, I'm going to be wrong. And I, I was concerned about how it was going to affect me. So I was thinking about not even doing the show that week, you know, and, and um, I said, well, let me he gave me the rundown and I was like, I reached out to a couple of uh, my buddy, Joe. He said, Hey, I got a bunch of friends in New York that are different cops. Let me give you your number. You can talk to them and just tell them how you feel and see where you're at. So I did something that uh, I didn't realize that you're supposed to do is if you're a journalist is research and talk to sources. <laughs> and I felt a lot better after that. And then I talked to some of my homies and, and I actually talked to Snoop a little bit about it. And, you know, cause we always at bodyguard, we always had an undercover retired officer on the team. You know, that's Snoop so, Dogg that you're yeah. talking about? Okay. I talked to the I talked to Al for a little bit and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna speak my mind. We'll see what happens. And um, you know, you can't if you can't you can't be true to yourself, what's the point of being on TV? A show like that. You know, if you're gonna pick and choose stuff, you either it's obviously not for me if I can't handle it. So I did it. It went viral, and of course the the catchphrase was if you're resisting arrest, you're not Rosa Parks, you're a criminal. It's about compliance. And it's still yes, no, yes, sir, no, sir, because the goal is to go home. And, it, and, I, and I talked both sides of it and it went viral. And then I get a call saying, hey, we need you every week. You know, and I was like, ah, oh, man, I got bookings and TV. And they were like, hey, how much uh, how much are you making in wrestling right now? What, what 150, uh, you know, two hundred thousand dollars. I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give or take, you know, <laughs> and they're like, well, we'll match it. I'm like, Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the uh, impact was having some financial problems at the time. And uh, I'll politely say our checks were a little bit late. And so <laughs> it couldn't have came at a better time for me as far as like personally. And it just continued to grow. And I started doing more, more stuff on Fox and less stuff on, on the road with wrestling. And, and then I eventually got down to the point where I just wrestled pretty much for the NWA. More so because I still like to wrestle, but it's the locker room. Like, I'm not ready to let go of the locker room. That's my time to hang out. It's all work, but then I get in the locker room and we're just cracking jokes and just being kids all day, and it's great. It's like the last thing you let go uh, before it's over. When the, when your comments went viral there, what was the sort of response that you got? Because you said you were worried, you know, you'll be wrong according to one side no matter what you say. Did you get mostly positive feedback? Did you get negative feedback? And did it kind of embolden you to speak out more when you were that, on the show in the future? That's such a good question. So... The response was overwhelmingly positive and mm -hmm. the negative ones were like stupid. Like it wasn't even, like, <laughs> it wasn't even anything that had to do with anything. It made me like reevaluate how I look at things because I put so much weight on what mainstream media news stories are where, cause the only thing they ever talk about if it's a, with, with police is if it's a white cop and, and a black suspect and something goes wrong, that's the only news coverage. And that gets conflated and you think that's something that's going on nonstop. And brothers, especially you get caught up and that's all you hear all the time. That's all you see. So when something does happen, you overreact, but that's what they do for ratings. And then once I realized that once you're outside the, the TV world, real people think very similar. So it was overwhelming. The response, it really made me have to look at how much weight that I put on what an opinion show that claims to be news is saying or what the media puts out there. And I was, it really, that kind of really got me more into the game in terms of like, say what 
Do you say based on what you see, not what you hear, or what sounds good, or will get you more TV shows? Mm-hmm. You ever have to beat up anyone or wrestle anyone on the set of Gutfeld? No. Uh, I'm uh, on average about 200 pounds heavier than everyone on the show and about a foot taller. <laughs> it's more of a deterrent. You know? I mean, I've had them think about wanting to hit me, but, <laughs> you know, especially when you get guests sometimes who like they're like script guys, I call them. Like no matter what the question is, they already have their answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like you can see them practicing and stuff. So if I see like their pre-written stuff, I will try to like say it before they say it. Just to see <laughs> what they will do. <laughs> one, one, one in particular, I'll leave them nameless, but uh, they were not happy. They were like not happy. And I was like, listen, I was really good at cheating in, in college and stuff. Like, I'm talking over here. <laughs> And there was one time, uh, because uh, Gutfeld does the five and I'll, a lot of times I'll watch the five and I'm texting him and I said, hey, ask him a different question. Ask him a different question. I'm telling you, no matter what you ask him, they're going to give the same answer. And he did. He asked a question. It was like about the humanitarian side of like something. And they still answered with a military thing. It was like something about how do you get children reintroduced into society after a traumatic war? And they went into, well, it's like, you know, these terrorists, you got to deal with these terrorists. And I was like, <laughs> laughing my i was like see he's like ron burgundy whatever's in the teleprompter he'll just say it (laughs) whatever he's planned to say i don't do very well with uh, those individuals i I feel like you got to fill the room like i'm the anchor on the show like Uh by the time it gets to me like and you guys know this you guys do this stuff you'll have a really good idea and like something you saw and you're like i can't wait everyone else saw that same good idea yeah go first and then they say it you can't go well actually greg i was going to say that (laughs) yeah Same. I said the same. Yeah. Across the country, Americans are discovering that if we want to change this nation, we have to change the way the marketplace works. Woke corporations are seeking to divide us. Big banks are freezing the accounts of people that disagree with their political views. And our supply chain is dependent upon countries that are actively working against our values. It's time for a change, and that change starts with you and your wallet. That's why we at the Babylon Bee are proud to partner with Public SQ, the largest directory of freedom-loving businesses our nation has ever seen. Public SQ is the first app to connect freedom-loving Americans with their local community and the businesses that share their values. Whether you want to support a restaurant that only buys from local farms, a coffee shop that took a stand against the COVID mandates, or a bank that would never cancel you for your political views, Public SQ is your guide. Just download the Public SQ app from the Apple App Store or Google Play, create a free account, and begin your search. You can also list your business for free so your local community can find you today. Download the app now. That's Public SQ. Public SQ. I'm I glad you have that feeling too, because the few times I've done gut felt, it's that it's that feeling also. And when they kind of call on you, because it's a mix of like a news commentary show and like a late night comedy show, do you primarily want to go for like making a point or getting a laugh? Do you have like a priority or do you kind of go with whatever feels right in the moment? So you have a plan and then the show starts. Yeah. <laughs> because if you stick to the plan, you're going to have a bad show. And sometimes, <laughs> especially with, with Greg, he's uh, he'll ask a question, but he'll have some creepy stuff in it. And sometimes I can't let <laughs> I like that you've called him creepy twice <laughs> in this interview. The creepy count is at two here. Yeah, yeah. It's probably going to be about 40. I mean, he's a genius, <laughs> but, he's, he do, he, but he does stuff purposely to try to get me out of my zone, which I like because that makes, you, that makes you better. And he knows that I don't like creepy, you know. And uh, so... I will have like a list of plans of things I want to do. But as I read the room and sometimes you might be a situation where it's getting a little too heavy or someone's getting a little angry and I might want to get a point and I'll be like, you know what, let me focus on the creepiness and pick on him <laughs> to loosen this up. Is that three or four now? And I'll save my uh, amazing point for another time. You know, sometimes you have to do that. Like that's, that's my role on the show. And, it, and it's a, it's a it's a fun role, but there there are times when you have to sacrifice the point for the betterment of the show, and I I had to learn that over time, you know. And it just it's about the the show, and if you're you'll always be able to get your point across. It just might not be when you want to. Sometimes you got to do things that's better for the show. Do you have any tattoos? Uh, yeah, I have one really big one. Uh, <laughs> Covers it starts on my hand and ends on my other hand. <laughs> Do you have any inch, square inch of your body that's not tattooed? Yeah, everything. I mean, I just did my arms and my chest, man. Gotcha, uh, yeah. 
my back, there was no point. I can't see it. So it's like, <laughs> I never got that. Um, the legs just wasn't really appealing to me. And uh, once I was like, I ran out of footage and I just, I think it also has a lot to do with, I think you want, I think you want tattoos when you're like 18 to like 28. I think that's like when you want to get all these tattoos and then you get in your thirties and unless you get your heart broke or like start your <laughs> midlife crisis, you're like, <laughs> So you're saying the tattoos I got a couple of years ago when I was 33 were a midlife crisis. You had some stuff going on, you know. And then, <laughs> <laughs> that explains and then, them. That explains it. <laughs> yeah, and then you get 40 and you're just like, I don't have, first of all, it's too expensive and I don't want to sit in a chair that long. And do I really need to get this point across? And as you get older, you less, at least for me, is like now I don't even think about tattoos. If someone's like, hey, you should get a tattoo. I'm like, I'm good. I, I got enough. <laughs> you're done. You're done. You should tell him about your tattoo. Do you, do you know about Kyle's tattoo? Well, I have three. Well, but you know the one. I, you know the one I'm talking. About. So I've got two Lord of the Rings tattoos, and you were making fun of Lord of the Rings earlier before we were. Uh, so we okay, started. let me let me let me turn this interview around. So what? Because here I've watched every one. Okay, and and I'll tell you what my issue was. They made probably the the most bubblegum villain of all time, the Boobakai. When that thing came out, I was like, oh, this is the best thing ever. Did you see the Cobra Kai? What did you say? Uber Kai. Cobra, Cobra Kai. Kai. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. When he dug him out of the, he came out of the mud and yeah. he gave him the greatest pep talk ever and told him you know, he's going to eat human flesh and then he just let him loose. And these, they were all like, they're like six, six jacked. And they were the worst fighters ever. They lost every <laughs> fight. <laughs> they couldn't even kidnap a halfling. Like it was just really, really frustrating. I was just like, no, these guys are. These guys are worse than stormtroopers, and that's saying a lot. That's, yeah, because <laughs> they don't shoot in stormtrooper academy school. And Burakai looked phenomenal, but couldn't sword fight or anything. But they were really good at dying, so it kind of <laughs> lost me on that. But again, I watched everyone in the movie theater. It's just, and then that one was really long. I was like, just kill him already, okay? He's, <laughs> like he's saying goodbye to everybody in the bed like three or four times. <laughs> That was a really long bed scene, you know, for him to get up and walk on a boat and sail away. It's like, I read, all, I read the books. I'm a huge fan of the author, but they kind of Hollywooded it up just a little bit. Yeah. And of course, I always will have issues with the Eagles forever. <laughs> so I don't, yeah. I don't know how long we want to talk about this, but I, <laughs> you know, Sauron had the flying Nazgul. So it's not like the Eagles could have just flown in uncontested. Well, all they need to do is have a woman with a sword on it. And it was, they just counted him because... Well, but the only reason that the the uh -huh. spell protecting the Witch King was broken was because Mary used the uh, the blade from the Barrow Downs, which had been enchanted with a spell to kill the Witch King of Angmar. So that's the only reason that he was vulnerable at that time. Yeah, but... Your thoughts? Never, no one ever killed an eagle. <laughs> and, anyway, the tattoo that he wanted me to show you says always. Always, okay. What, is your, what are your thoughts? <laughs> it was a great movie. Um... <laughs> He died in a fire so everyone else could live. So, I mean, it was... I don't think everybody, anybody's ever referenced no, the movie after always, seeing that tattoo. They think it's about the maxi pad brand. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, I have four kids. I wish I would have saw more maxi pads in my day. <laughs> <laughs> but I love my kids now. Now, uh, you have your uh, new memoir that just came out, Just Tyrus, and I believe it's number one on Amazon, which is awesome. It's been... Uh, number one, everything, and then they sold out because my publisher clearly did not believe in me. So <laughs> they didn't make enough copies. Oh, man. So, yeah, and then Amazon was threatening to turn the buy button off. So oh, wow. Yeah, so they're scrambling to get uh, more books out there. So, uh, yeah, I I still don't kind of get it. I got fired during writing the writing mm -hmm. process of the book, and um, it ended up being a spite book more than anything else. <laughs> And, uh, so that's what inspired you to write your memoir with spite? It started out like uh, I thought it would be good to to tell my story. I wasn't telling my whole life story because I think like that's that's a little bit. I think when people do that, it, they, it's a little arrogant. Who really wants to need to know everything? But I thought I would talk about like how I got to uh, wrestling, bodyguard and football, all that stuff. So I did a little bit about my childhood. But it was like I picked I kind of picked like stories. I'm like, I'm going to pick 10 stories about my life and and kind of put them together and see, you know, if people can relate or not. And the crazy thing was that they really did relate to it, but it was a tough process. You know, even when I was doing the 
process of writing. They're like, so what have you written before? Do you write op-eds? I'm like, no, no, I'm not really an op-ed guy. They're like, what about a, a blog? Nope. No, I kind of stick with that whole Twitter thing, the little character thing. That's more my speed, like, you know, 13 characters or whatever it is. Like, <laughs> 13 yeah, you're going to have to write. I wrote some essays in college and high school, though, that were, I got, I think I got a couple B pluses and stuff. So they're like, yeah, you, you have to write a lot. And I was like, yeah, like if you're going to write, you know, a 300 page book, you got to write 500 pages or whatever. And I was like, yeah, cool. And I figured I'd try it. If it didn't work out, it, 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 it didn't work out. But uh, Harper Collins originally, um, picked me up and they were like, you know, we're going to, they offer you, you do, I made the deal with myself and you get an advance. And I was a little worried about getting a big adv advance because if the book sucked, I didn't want to pay it all back, you know? <laughs> so they kept it small and they said, yeah, one other thing is you got to have a ghostwriter. We just, you, this is your first book and I don't, you can write stuff, but he needs to mold it and help you and all that kind of stuff because it's more complicated and more complex than than you think and i'm not i wouldn't argue that i was like okay great so they assigned me a guy i'll leave them nameless for the point of this story but uh and uh they're like hey he's a sports guy and he's done some stuff with athletes before and uh you guys are gonna hit it off and this is the guy we want you to go with so i was like okay great and of course he commanded um 60 of my advance to do the project so up front so I was like, which I ne never, just a word of advice, guys, never pay anybody up front. Never, <laughs> ever in any situation is going to end badly. And uh, I started writing and submitting stuff and we did recordings, but all I ever wanted to talk about was Snoop Dogg. This guy was obsessed with Snoop. <laughs> and I said, I'm not writing a book guide to Snoop Dogg by Tyrus. Like, that's not what I'm it's doing. your but. biography of Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yes, basically, yes. Of me watching him live his best life <laughs> from three to five feet away. Uh, <laughs> Months go by, and finally I was like, hey, uh, you think I can look at a chapter? He's like, whoa, 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 bro. That's my process. I don't show you the work until I'm done. That's how I do my thing. I was like, whoa, excuse me. I apologize. You know, I'm a comedian and stuff, and my art's different. I have to show my work every time it's asked. Writers, I guess, are different. So I was like, okay, well, um, when do you think I can look at something? I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. So Walter Kern, who's a regular guest on Gutfeld and the super writer. And I was like, yeah, man, my ghostwriter, I keep sending him stuff. And he says, like, it's his process not to let me see anything until it's finished. And he started laughing. He's like, yeah, I used to say that when I didn't do any work. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, that's what you tell the publisher if you don't want any work. Like, like, try this. Ask him to send you a copy. And if his Xerox machine's broken. I said, so he's catfishing me? Like, he's like, says he's a hot girl from Australia, but his video <laughs> camera phone's broken? Yeah girlfriend in Canada. Yeah. yeah. You know, the old cam's broken. So I decided to play a trick on him. I was like, Hey man, I just got the phone with the publisher. They said they're going to cancel the book unless uh, they get a chapter. <laughs> he said, ah, they're not going to cancel the book, bro. <laughs> I was like, they're going to cancel the book. So he was like, yeah, I'll send you something right now. Lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, his copy machine broke and his computer <laughs> got water on it. So I called the publisher and I told him what was going on. He's like, oh, man, yeah, that sounds like he's not doing the work. And I was like, yeah, what are we going to do about this guy? He's like, oh, I'll call him. And he's like, yeah, I just got off the phone with him. We kind of had these issues with this guy before. And I was like, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah. Uh, here's the thing, though. Your book doesn't really have much direction to it. And I was like, yeah, no kidding. The guys didn't do any of my work. <laughs> I think we're probably just we're just going to we're going to suspend the book, I think. And I was like, suspend like what? a week or are you canceling the book? And he's like, well, if you want me, if you want to say it that way, yeah. You, so I'm fi You're firing me basically. He's like, yeah. And they stuck me with the bill. So I had to pay back the advance. I paid the ghostwriter. And I don't know about you guys, but I, wow. I didn't have 30 G's just laying around in my pocket. So that's not I, how much Chris's mom paid you. Yeah. Right. No, <laughs> no. Chris's mom. Actually, she shorted me. I was supposed to get 300. <laughs> I think I got 225. But she already signed the check and she would have to tear it up and make a whole new one. So it was a whole thing. Classic. But uh, yeah, it was bad, man. And uh, I was humiliated. And and then uh, I told him, all right, man, well, you know, I'm going to write this book myself. And he was like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Good luck, man. Hey, it's not personal. Yeah. It's personal to me. But uh, so I found the little guy who didn't do the work and I basically made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And 
he was like, oh, I'll find the stuff you sent and I'll, I'll get it back to you. And he was like, oh, I know a guy uh, over at Post Sill named Jacob. I, maybe we could talk to him. He's a publisher. And I was like, yeah, give me his number. He's like, yeah, you know, together we could get this straightened out. I was like, yeah, sure, man. Yeah. Once I had the number, I didn't have any use for him after that. Had a meeting with Post Hill, told him exactly what happened. Uh, and because I did it in an entertaining way and they laughed a couple of times, like, yeah, you know what? Why not? We'll, we'll give you a shot. And um, they said, we're going to hook you up with a writing coach to help you. And I was like, a writing coach? And he's like, yeah, and this guy's a real deal, Chris Epting, and uh, got along with him. And he just kind of guided me through the process and helped me put everything together. And then it was finished. And I was just so happy I finished it. I didn't even care if I sold two. I mean, obviously, I'm going to sell one. So I'm going to buy it. But, you know, and, and then the pre-sales were going really well. And, of course, pandemic, shipping issues, no, no place to print it. It was supposed to come out Christmas. And then, like, oh, it's not going to be able to get out to April. We just don't have anyone printing the books. Like, we just, it's just back ordered. And um, then it finally came out in April and they made, I think it was 50,000 books. And I thought, wow, I don't know if I'm going to sell that many books. That's a lot of books. And uh, we were number one, like, I think we opened and within an hour, we were number one on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and Books a Million. And I was like, uh, what does that even mean? And they're like, people are buying your book. That's what that means. And then we were sold out on Amazon pretty quickly. And then Noble sold out. And now Walmart, I think we're down like Walmart has like the in some in stores still have them, but most of the stuff online is sold out. So if you're looking for Tyrus's book, go to Walmart as fast as you can. <laughs> yeah. That's where they're left. <laughs> then they're like, oh, don't worry. We've got 9,000 more we're giving to Amazon. So that will, you know, slow it down. And then when it got there, Amazon was like, we need more. We're, it's gone. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, so I'm just waiting for the shoe to fall and be like, oh, there was some clause. You, If you sell more than this, we keep everything. So I'm just waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for the hustle. You know, Is that a common? <laughs> a common trend. In my, if you read my book, yeah, it happens way more. <laughs> at, at one point I, in my life, I decided to take penitentiary chances because nothing was working. And I was probably the only guy ever to, to do a drug run from... California to Atlanta and successfully do it and not get paid. Oh, we'll get the next one, dog. All you got to do is do one more. And I was like, yeah, I think maybe it's time for a new career. And now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Are you burned out? I know that I can get burned out. I came from a sales background and we had bosses yelling at us and screaming at us. And oh boy, life can certainly be overwhelming and many people are burned out. Symptoms of burnout can include lack of motivation, irritability, fatigue. We associate burnout with work, but that isn't the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out. BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. I can speak from personal experience that going to therapy, talking with a trusted friend, talking with a pastor, talking with a fellow Christian, those are all things that can help you. You can't just work through your problems on your own. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't even have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. That's great for an introvert like me. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. And our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Babylon B. That's betterhelp.com slash Babylon B. Well, that was a great interview with Tyrus. If you want to catch the rest of it, you're going to have to join us into the subscriber portion where we're going right now. We're also going to do a Classic B article of the week and subscriber headlines. Let's do it. This has been another edition of the B Weekly from the dedicated team of certified fake news journalists you can trust here at the Babylon B, reminding you that someone out there knows something about Carmen, and we're going to find them. <laughs>